Now, I want to hear a little bit of why you guys decided to participate this week in the local event. Vi el programa y me interesó, aunque soy de Juárez, no no estoy muy consciente de todo lo de con los inmigrantes, etc. Entonces, me llamó la atención para ver cómo está la situación y ver qué puedo ayudar. I think just being from El Paso, I feel like maybe sometimes we lose touch of the fact that, you know, people want to come in and have the same opportunities uh, here in the U.S. And I feel like I certainly maybe don't, don't have that sense. And so I, I think this experience can help me be in touch with, with that and uh, gain that experience. I knew that it was going to be heavy but I think I kind of didn't mentally prepare myself for how rough it would be emotionally, I guess. Cuando yo llego a la casa del migrante, yo lo, cuando empiezo a hablar con ellos, lo primero que les digo, déjame tocar tus pies. Voy a dar un masaje. Tocar los pies para mucha gente es denigrante. Pero también la otra parte del que se siente atendido es la vergüenza de qué? Los, las uñas largas pies lastimados. Muchos de ellos llegan a tener hasta un mes sin poderse quitar los zapatos porque si no se los roban. Y la planta de pie, cuando se llegan a quitar los calcetines, los calcetines se paran solos. El olor es tremendo. Y la planta del pie, a carne viva. Entonces la experiencia con ellos es tener misericordia. Entonces, cada uno de ustedes, como visita, puede escoger a la persona, a la mujer que quiera, y diga, yo quiero esta persona. Y vamos a, a hablar un poquito sobre el contexto de sus preguntas. Mira, este grupo llegué hace 20 años, ah. era una mujer que no hablaba, y aquí aprendí a hablar, aquí aprendí a valorar mi desde que entró y no sé, fue algo Sí, la, le, le digo, fue, fue algo como una conexión así casi sí. espiritual donde me senté con, con usted y con la señora Lourdes y sentí como que estaba hablando con, con mi mamá, o sea, con mi abuelita de, de, de cosas que ya habíamos platicado antes entre yo y mi mamá y, y pues los problemas que ella ha encontrado pues me, me motiva porque yo siento como que tengo una responsabilidad para tratar de ayudar y, 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 y este, enseñar y educar. It's also like upsetting and upsetting in the sense of like, I mean, we talked about this, how, how frustrating it is that no, no, nothing feels like it's getting done for these people. Um, and I, I don't know how like, how to sit with that. Does that make sense? That inner yeah. The immigration crisis has been so politicized where we are going to be affected. And I've certainly felt that. I felt that fear of not knowing whether or not my parents are going to be here the next, next morning. Because my, my parents are illegal. My parents came to this country because they were displaced, because they had nowhere else to turn. Oh, 
obviamente no les podemos dar el paquete de calcetines a una persona tratar de hacerlo lo más organizado posible para poderle dar un paque, un, un par por persona sin sí, preferencia que se formen los niños primero y luego ya los, los adultos y un par por persona ok It's just chaotic. I feel like that encapsulates what the immigration crisis is. It's, it's chaotic. I think the one image that I would say kind of comes back is I remember seeing just like a plethora of like hands, just like reaching. And I can still remember this little boy He was saying, Señor, Señor, and he was at the very front. And he was being pushed, like, just for us to, to give him socks. And it was, like, overwhelming. That's an image that, that I have to sit with. And that I don't think I'll be able to let go. St. John Baptist de Lusau, live Jesus in our hearts. The biggest question that I have to answer right now is like, what role do I play in helping society get rid of this cancerous rhetoric that is just so anti-human? Este, aplaudimos esta actitud valiente de solidaridad de parte de ustedes para con nosotros verdaderamente que entiendan la situación en que las encontramos, nos encontramos en este momento. Necesitamos muchos corazones solidarios, mucha gente solidaria y necesitamos mucha gente que conozca la verdadera historia. ¿Qué, qué opina usted de la narrativa que ha creado la prensa sobre los migrantes aquí en El Paso? Bueno, eh, eh, fíjate que los medios de comunicación, la situación de los medios de comunicación es bastante confusa. That's my role right now, is just, you know, helping those that are close to my age. Just understanding, like, hey, like, this is real. But, anyways, it's, it's the end of the week. I want to hear from you. I want to know what you learn, what you're bringing back, what you have trouble understanding. Whatever you want to share, this is your space. The fact that, you know, I complain about my day to day life a lot, uh, but I don't know how human beings experiencing that get up every single day and experience that all to get what I was born with. This week, I saw beautiful landscapes, stained glass cathedrals, broken human relationships, friendships grow. Guillermo. I touched children's hands and the wall. Denise. Bueno, adiós, Denise. Adiós, Guillermo. Adiós. Another meaningful uh, interaction that I had was the bliss and connection through the water balloons fight because that language barrier just was drawn down. In 
being around these kids, I like see them as like my siblings. And just for them to be like, yeah, like we don't get to stay here anymore, like our flight's here. I like feel like so proud, like you made it all this way, you did it, like you're gonna go to where you wanted to, that destination, like you did it even though like, it's not like you are still in that system. You got like a pathway made for you. And I just feel like so happy for you. Estamos aquí unidos, celebrando el sacramento de nuestra unidad como miembros de la Iglesia de Cristo. And that's another shocking factor to know that these people get like the short end of the stick and they're still just as faithful in God or in whatever they believe in. Being able to see that through others and I guess kind of like take those aspects and like apply them to your life and to understand that, hey, like I am capable of so much. I'm capable of giving back. I think that's powerful. I mean, at the albergue, we met with two <laughs> alumni who graduated in 1965, who still stick to what it means to be uh, a cathedral alum, coming in to, to learn and leaving to serve. Like, we can't talk about young people in the context of the future. We have to talk about them in the now. And I think that's so important. That's what I want to do. I want to work in the now because I'm not happy with what's on the news. I'm not happy with what's going on. And I mean, there's no level of productivity in just being upset about it. There's a level of productivity in going out and seeing it for yourself, in going out and voting about it, in going out and building communities of people, whether it's five people, 10 people, thousands of people, and bringing about awareness, bringing about just Hope.